I was sitting there the other day listening to the news and they were talking about global warming and all the problems with increased CO2 levels in the air. And then it just hit me. CO2 is used by plants. We should be able to use that to make plants grow faster. And that's something that gardeners have never really tried. Now, let me take you back a step and explain what I'm talking about. There have been a number of studies that looked at increasing the CO2 level in greenhouses. Here's one of them. And what they found was that the tomato plants grew faster and had a higher yield. Now this is a fairly well understood phenomenon and quite a few greenhouses actually do this. Here's a chart to show you what happens as CO2 levels increase. The two dashed lines, they intersect at normal CO2 levels and you'll see that the percent of growth is 100%. That's the normal growth of plants. As we increase the CO2 levels, we move to the right on this chart, and you can see a dramatic increase in the growth of plants. In fact, if we double the CO2 level, we actually double the growth in plants. You do get to a point where you've added so much CO2 it becomes toxic to plants and then their growth rate goes down. But as long as the increase in CO2 is kept relatively small, we should see faster growing plants. What about plant growth and CO2 levels outside? How does that affect plants? We're seeing CO2 levels increase and scientists predict that plants will grow faster. And there have been a number of studies now that have looked at this. An international team of 32 authors from 24 institutions in eight countries led the effort to understand this better. And they use NASA's satellite data to try and understand plant growth. And here's one of the maps that they developed. It shows a significant increase in greening of the earth over the last 10, 20 years. The science on this is pretty clear. As CO2 levels increase, plants grow bigger and faster. So why does the level of CO2 affect plant growth? Well, here's a diagram that shows what happens during photosynthesis. The plant absorbs CO2 and it takes the light from the sun and it combines the energy of the sun with the CO2 and it converts that to oxygen and carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are made up of the carbon. That's the sugar source. That's the energy source for plants. The more carbohydrates a plant can produce, the faster it's able to grow. Now you'll notice that the plant also needs water, and that's an important component in this reaction. But in indoor plants, we can control the water to make sure there's lots of it. And with the new LED lights, we can actually give that plant lots of light. Some of the best LED grow lights are producing just as much light as the sun. Now, when I first heard that, I thought, oh, that can't possibly be true. So I looked up the numbers, and in fact, it's true. Now, I'm talking high-end LEDs, not the lights that most gardeners buy. But any LED will produce light. And so the limiting factor on growth is the amount of CO2 a plant can get. If we can increase the amount of CO2 the plant has, it should produce more sugars and more carbohydrates, and it will have more energy and grow faster. Now the question is, how do home gardeners make use of this? And can we increase the level enough to make a difference? So I thought I'd run some experiments and start indoors because it's a little easier to do there than outside. And I asked the question, well, how do we increase the CO2 levels? And this is the experiment I came up with. So the first thing I need is a source of CO2. Now I could go out and get some cylinders and fiddle around a lot of equipment, but I was looking for something simple that the average gardener could use. And I think I've come up with it. It's a candle. If you light a candle, the wax burns. The wax is turned into CO2 in the flame. So anything that burns is producing CO2. That's why we have such high CO2 levels in the air right now. We're burning fossil fuels. We're burning oil. Anytime we burn something, it's giving off CO2. So there you have a very simple CO2 generator. The next thing I needed was a plant. And that was pretty easy. I got lots of them in the house. And I figured I'd pick on my streptocarpus. These are slow-growing plants, and it would be really great if I could 
speed up their growth. Here's a little guy that's just starting to flower. It does have a few leaves. It's been in the pot for a little while, so it's a healthy plant. And I think it's a good test subject. So we'll use this plant. I could put these together and the candle will produce CO2. The problem with that is the CO2 is going to go out into the air and go all over the place. It's not going to be concentrated near the plant. So to solve that problem, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use one of these and put it over top. This will trap the CO2 around the plant. Let me show you the whole setup. So I've got my candle. We'll light it, set it near my plant, and cover the whole thing up. Now you'll notice that I haven't covered it completely. I want a bit of air to escape here. I don't want this to get really hot. I just want enough CO2 produced to fill the chamber to surround the plant with CO2. For my first experiment, what I'm going to do is set this up underneath my LED lights and I'm going to turn the candle on first thing in the morning. Now in the morning when the lights come on, the stomata of the leaves will open up and they suck in lots of CO2. Those stomata have been closed all night and they're hungry for CO2. When the lights come on, it energizes photosynthesis and that should be a good time to get the process really started well. I'll leave that candle on for about 10 minutes. That should be enough to fill this with CO2. I don't want to get the CO2 level too high or I might damage the plant. Then I'll come along at midday, light it again, and leave it for another 10 minutes. So the plant will be treated with high levels of CO2 twice a day, and the chamber here should hold the CO2 in for quite some time. So now it's just a matter of setting up and waiting. I'll bring you back when I've got something to show you. It's been two weeks since I started this experiment, and I can't believe the results. The plant has grown much faster than I ever thought possible. This is what the plant looks like now. Look at all the flowers on this thing, and the leaves are growing like crazy. The growth I've seen in this plant in two weeks would normally take two months. Streps are slow growing plants, and this is just phenomenal growth. The results are so positive, I'm going to run some more experiments. I'm going to redo the experiment using three candles instead of just the one that I use. And I'm going to turn it on for 10 minutes three times a day instead of just twice a day. I want to see how fast I can make these plants really grow. I hope you've enjoyed my April Fool's video. If you did, I've made a couple others in the past and you can see them here on the screen. Have a great day and don't believe everything you see on the internet. Goodbye.